Good morning. I am Jeff Green. I am the chair of the Ben May Department for Cancer Research at the University of Chicago, and I have worked in the uh, steroid receptor field for more than 40 years, and in particular um, on developing and characterizing uh, receptor antagonists. And uh, Sean Fanning will come next, and uh, he is a, a senior fellow in my lab. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's really my pleasure today to tell you about our work with basedoxifene, which is um, a estrogen receptor alpha antagonist, uh, and we're interested in it for use in uh, overcoming hormone-resistant uh, breast cancers, uh, really for treating these cancers. Uh, even still today, breast cancer remains a significant health challenge for women. Um, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their lifetime. In the U.S. alone, over 40,000 women will die every year uh, as a result of their disease. Uh, we care about estrogen receptor, uh, in particular estrogen receptor alpha in breast cancer, because over 70% of uh, these diseases are classified by their expression of the protein. Uh, when we think about how small molecules uh, modulate estrogen receptor in breast cancer cells, we kind of typically uh, classify them in three different ways. Uh, first is uh, the classic hormone binding, which uh, leads to uh, increased uh, path pathology by the breast cancer. Um, here, estradiol, shown as a green, uh, a green square, binds to estrogen receptor, which makes it uh, shed heat shock proteins in the cytosol, uh, form head-to-head -head homodimers, and it elicits a structural rearrangement that leads to the recruitment of coactivator proteins that go to thousands of different target genes and essentially reprogram the cell's transcriptome, uh, leading to the pathogenic phenotype. Now, uh, drugs like selective estrogen receptor modulators or SERMs, uh, the most probably well-known is 4-hydroxytamoxifen, um, or tamoxifen, and 4-hydroxytamoxifen is the active metabolite of it. Um, it competitively binds to estrogen receptor alpha and um, also elicits a structural change, but it's a different structural change than when hormone binds, leading to uh, recruitment of co-repressor proteins instead of co-activators, um, where it, again, reprograms the transcriptional profile of the cell, but in this way, it um, leads to decreased pathology instead of increased pathology. Um, so it prevents the um, metastasis in the adjuvant setting. Now, selective estrogen receptor degraders, uh, like fulvestrant, or also it's also called ICI, um, they can also antagonize receptor like 4-hydroxytamoxifen, but they disorder its structure um, as well, and this leads to recruitment um, to the uh, of E3 ligases, uh, both ubiquitin and sumo, um, which then leads to its proteasomal degradation. So. Um, these SIRDs are more thought of as being um, pure antagonists in some ways because they antagonize receptor in every tissue, whereas uh, selective estrogen receptor modulators have tissue-specific um, antagonism. We use uh, X-ray crystal structures to understand how these molecules elicit these structural changes and lead to different uh, receptor activities inside the breast cancer cell. Uh, on the left, we see estrogen shown as green sticks on the interior of the protein. This is the ligand binding domain of the estrogen receptor in its homodimer state. Um, I've highlighted in red what we call helix 12. This is the C-terminal helix of the receptor, and it's really the main molecular switch that governs this coactivator-mediated um, activity in the breast cancer cell. Um, on the left, in the active state, Helix 12 is capped over the hormone binding pocket. This opens up what's called the AF2 cleft or activating function 2 cleft, where co-regulator bind by LXXLL motifs. On the right, we see 4-hydroxytamoxifen bound, which is, um, again, one of the most widely used selective estrogen receptor modulators in disease. And uh, you can see here that Helix 12, instead of binding over the ligand binding pocket, um, is essentially prohibited from doing so by the arm of tamoxifen and now finds a new home in the AF2 cleft where uh, it blocks co-regulators from binding. Now, tamoxifen is 
uh, again, frequently used in the adjuvant setting following chemotherapy and radiation. It's uh, also frequently given as a course of antiestrogens for several years. Uh, unfortunately, many patients will present new metastatic hormone resistant lesions or cancers, uh, metastases, following uh, these prolonged treatment regimens. Kind of paradoxically, many of these patients retain the expression of estrogen receptor, even though they're insensitive to uh, treatment by these antiestrogens. Um, so around 2013 or 2014, several studies, uh, in particular by um, our collaborators, uh, Surat Chandralapati at Memorial and Silicon Kettering and Miles Brown at uh, Dana-Farber, um, did deep genomic sequencing on these hormone-resistant uh, metastatic lesions and found that uh, there was a prevalence of uh, somatic mutations to ESR1, which is the gene for estrogen receptor alpha, um, in many of these patients. Uh, in particular, these mutations seem to lie at the ligand binding domain, uh, in particular at uh, positions 537, where it's typically tyrosine to serine mutation, and position 538, which is uh, an aspartate to glycine. And interestingly, both of these mutations lie right at the end terminus of helix 12. So you can see um, on the right, I kind of highlighted in yellow the positions of where these mutations are. Um, these mutations, uh, but in particular Y537S, create a receptor that's active in the absence of hormone and resistant to 4-hydroxytamoxifen. Um, well, the only, sorry, the only, the only molecule that seems uh, targeted estrogen receptor alpha antagonist that seems to um, be able to fully ablate the transcriptional activity is the selective estrogen receptor degrader fulvestrin. Um, in 2016, we published a paper in eLife that uh, looked at the molecular basis for this dysfunctional receptor activity that's brought on by these uh, activating somatic mutations. And what we found is that uh, using X-ray crystal structures and biophysics and computational methods was that um, the 537S and 538G somatic mutations uh, produce a receptor that can adopt the agonistic conformation in the absence of hormone, um, but it still can be activated by hormone by uh, the binding of estrogen. Um, so essentially, these mutations introduce this new equilibria seen at the bottom, whereas um, you can see at the top with the wild type receptor that this equilibrium is not present. Uh, we also found that by preforming the agonist conformation of the receptor, it reduces the ligand binding affinity of uh, both hormone and tamoxifen alike. Uh, in this, we saw we kind of postulated that selective estrogen receptor degraders could be more potent because they act on uh, helix 12. They're well known to act on helix 12 by disordering the structure, which is what leads to proteasomal degradation. Um, while fulvestrant looked certainly promising in our early studies, uh, its clinical utility is somewhat limited by its poor solubility and lack of uh, oral availability. Um, with that, we wanted to look at maybe some other potential clinical candidates and see um, how they would act in this um, ESR1 mutation setting. Uh, we chose to work with basedoxifene. It seemed like the logical choice to us because it's a molecule with CERD properties, um, it's orally available, um, and it's already been examined for another use in the clinic, and it's approved um, in, uh, in combination with Premarin for hormone replacement therapies. Uh, and I believe it's also approved in Europe uh, to help with osteoporosis. Um, I guess most importantly of all, uh, work by Donald McDonald at Duke show that um, basedoxifene is a uh, Potent anti um, has potent anti tumor properties in vivo in uh, preclinical models that had uh, the Y five thirty seven S mutation. Um, so first, we wanted to look at its properties in the wild type setting and see how that uh, eventually translated into uh, the Y five thirty seven S and D five thirty eight G. So this was done by Renath Jesselson at Dana Farber, uh, who's a co author on this paper, and she showed that. Um, Basically, basedoxifene is a highly potent inhibitor of uh, wild-type estrogen receptor alpha transcriptional activity, and uh, it also induces the receptor degradation similar to fulvestrant or ICI. And um, compared to ICI and 4-hydroxytamoxifen, you can see in panel G, 
uh, basidoxyphene is just as potent, if not a little bit more potent, at inhibiting the breast cancer cell proliferation. Uh, so being a structural biologist, I was interested in uncovering what is, uh, how does basidoxyphene interact with estrogen receptor alpha ligand binding domain to elicit this SIRD profile. And as I kind of alluded to earlier, um, one of the main ways we know that SIRDs induce proteasonal degradation is by disordering helix 12. This, uh, this exposes hydrophobic residues to the, um, to the surface, which then leads to proteasomal degradation. Um, so we were able to solve an X-ray crystal structure to uh, 2.5 angstroms of basidoxyphene in complex with the wild type ER alpha ligand binding domain. And here I've overlaid it with uh, raloxifen, which is a selective estrogen receptor modulator. It doesn't degrade protein, it stabilizes it. And it's the most chemically similar uh, kind of clinically relevant molecule. Um, if we look at um, panel B, you can see that basidoxyphene in cyan uh, pushes up against the, heli the loop preceding helix 12. And this in turn appears to disorder the helix. It looks less helical um, early on by positions 537. Uh, now going to how it acts in the in the context of the activating somatic mutations, we see that um, basidoxamine is highly potent in cells that act topically express the Y537S mutant, um, and it also uh, potently inhibits uh, tr its transcriptional activity. Um, it does induce degradation, or it's uh, more disordered compared to raloxifen and 4-hydroxytamoxifen, which are both SERMs. Um, and uh, interestingly, for the 538G mutation, we saw that um, it appears to disorder the receptor a little bit more than fulvestrin, or at least as good as it. Um, what I don't show is that we did comprehensive um, computational modeling, as well as um, in vitro dynamics experiments using HD exchange mass spectrometry, as well as ligand binding affinity. And through all these uh, experiments, what we saw is that basidoxyphene's uh, SIRD activity, its ability to disrupt helix 12 is really what makes it um, a good potent inhibitor in this setting, whereas um, tamoxifen in particular seems like its uh, activity is substantially reduced. Um, so overall, again, it's the SIRD activity of basidoxyphene that makes it a potent antagonist of these uh, Y537S and D538G um, breast cancer cells. Uh, so there's a lot of people to acknowledge in this. Uh, in particular, uh, uh, Surat Chandra, uh, Chandra Lapidi's group at Mor Mor Memorial Sloan Kettering, uh, Miles Brown's group at Dana-Farber and uh, Harvard Medical School, uh, and the uh, second author on this paper, Renaf, did a ton of work and um, was really helpful on this. Um, there's also uh, significant efforts from uh, John Katzenelbogen and Imad Tchorkid's group at University of Illinois, as well as uh, Pat Griffin and uh, Kendall Nettles at Scripps Research Institute. Thank you very much.